I can't think of a better way to end Monday than to share time with friends. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is the last Monday of August. It is the 28th. Now, if you watch my show, you know what we do here. We go hunting for hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking through all the markets for any stock under 5 bucks that has the potential to make us some money. Now, when I'm looking for hot penny stocks, I'm looking for two things. Of course, a catalyst. We need a big piece of news. But more importantly, I'm looking for a chart that has heat. Big news can fall flat on its face on a cold chart. So to me, it just seems more important to look at the charts first. So I'm looking for a chart that has volume coming in or maybe a breakout setup or there's a lot of big bounces or even a surge that just won't quit. Something that says that chart is hot. When I get a chart with heat, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that catalyst. When I find one, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And I like to share these with you every single day. And I've got some for you right now. Well, let's jump on into our stock buffet. First ticker we're taking a look at is Inocan Pharma Corporation, ticker INNPF. Now, the chart is what caught my attention. She is breaking out. She's taken 100% gains over the last 10 days. But she's only traded three out of the last 10 days. But the volume is picking up right now. She has been dormant and now she's come alive. She is going through all of her SMAs and looking strong. She just had her financials. They were very good. We're going to look at those. And there's lots of news that they've been coming out with that is building up momentum. So to me, she's looking ready and primed for a pop. So the company finished the day at about 34 and a half cents with just a little over 30% gains today. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to call this the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials to exist on the QB. They also have a minimum bid price requirement. They can't go under one penny. If they stay under a penny too long, they'll get yanked off and thrown back down to the pink. We've got more validated information. We've got a transfer agent verified and a verified profile. I am always telling you to look for these because these represent a lot of information that's verified behind the scenes. And when you're trading OTC stocks, you don't get a lot of verified information. But on the QB, we've got verified numbers and now we've got verified information. Looking good. She is also penny stock exempt. This is a bonus for us. This is a good thing. This removes the risk of her being, say, like a startup company. How do they do that? They have to have been in business for three to five years, had millions of dollars of assets or revenues during that time period, and kept up with their financials. In other words, they've shown us, they've proven to us they are responsible, so they're not risky like a startup company. So what is this company all about? Well, they tell us down here, the corporation's business can be described as three distinct operating segments relating to the incorporation and products of CBD, cannabinoids coming from cannabis. Their first segment is research, development, marketing, distribution, and sales of the InnoCan branded over-the-counter pharmaceutical products. They also do research and development for non-pharmaceutical products containing CBDs. And the third section is research and development of hydrogels containing lipsosomes and exosomes. Uh, intended for licensing or sale to third-party pharmaceutical corporations for manufacturing, distribution, and sales. So what was the relative volume around this Canadian company today? Ooh, they did well, jumping about 1,800% in volume. They went from 579 shares a day, I told you she's been dormant, up to 9,500 shares. Now, yeah, these aren't big numbers, but that is 18 times her normal volume. We can't overlook that. Share structure for Inocan, they got a lot of them. 262 million, that is just over a quarter billion shares in the outstanding share count. Restricted shares, this is what the insiders own, about 17 million. And if these numbers are correct, that would leave us with about 245 million shares in the float. Just under a quarter billion. Definitely not a low float. Financials for Inocan. We had some revenues in 2021, $196,000. Now we know it's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. 
Now they tell us here they had no annual revenues for 2022. That is not correct. Looking at the quarterly, we can easily see the first three quarters they did have revenues. So annually, if you add that up, it was about $1.4 million over those three quarters. Well, the very first quarter of 2023, they exceeded that. They're at $1.5 million, 1.5. Now let's take a look at the most recent financials that just came out. We just did 1.5 last quarter. This quarter, they did 3.1. We have just doubled our revenues from quarter to quarter. And if you compare it to last year's quarter, they only did $415,000 last year. That is a 652% increase year over year. Now look at the gross profits. This last quarter, they did $2.6 million in gross profit compared to last year at the same time when they only did $214,000. That is a 1,141% increase in profits. They're growing very quick right now. They tell us that they are very thrilled with the significant growth they achieved in the second quarter. The CEO says our strategic focus on integrating cannabinoids with existing proven drugs alongside the robust sales from our subsidiary, BI Sky Global LTD, have significantly contributed to this tremendous increase in both revenues and gross profit. We remain committed to our vision and we are optimistic about the future. So revenues are growing at a nice clip. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We have no disclosures to consider, but we got lots of news. So I've gone back here actually to March of this year. Now we're not going to go into any of these. We're only going to headline it, but you can see they have a lot of different products that they're working with and they're making lots of progress. So starting back here in March, the company reports successful results of efficacy tests for vagina derma product. Now, when I was going through their news, they're working on all sorts of stuff, ADHD, epilepsy, uh, and stuff like that. So they're working on a lot of different things. Inocan reports novel cannabinoid delivery platform patent application. So they're getting those patents in there. In May, the company announces 5,000 unit sale and expansion to Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia markets. The company reports success in preclinical trials of Litsomo CBD injection on a paralyzed goat. I have no idea what this is about. That's going to be an interesting read. Then at the end of July, the company unveils groundbreaking veterinary breakthroughs at EAVPT 2023 Congress. No clue what's going on there, but that sounds interesting. Then here in August, they had a private placement. An investor came in, gave him just shy of $2 million. August 15th, the company announces promising successful results in efficacy trial of diabetic foot relief treatment. As I said, they're working with a lot of different types of ailments with their products. And the very last piece of news had to do with their financials, and we've already looked at that. So let's go take a look at this chart. There's not a lot to look at, but I think she's got more to give. I'm ready to do some charting. We're going to be using my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that was free too. So we are looking at ticker I, NNPF, Inacan Pharma. Now, this is a one-year, one-day chart, and I pulled this up so I could show you we made a new 52-week high today. It was a year ago we had it. She was at 32.5 cents. Today, we hit 35.5 cents. Have fallen back about a penny at 34 and a half cents, still holding on to that new 52 week high. Coming on down to our six month, four hour view. There's our 52 week low, 14.2 cents, which we hit in April. She went sideways until 10 days ago. That's when she started to climb. And as you can see, she's only traded three days out of the last 10 days, but it has been strong, lots of energy. She started down here at about 15 cents and went to that 35 and a half cents, pulling back to 34 and a half cents. She has crossed all of the SMAs that are available. We don't have the 200 day SMA here. The volume is starting to pick up as are our oscillators. We got a crossover on our PPO. Our MACD has just crossed our signal line with lots of green bars accumulating. And look at our RSI. 
she has been climbing for quite a while and is finally all the way up here at 66. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. That looks beautiful. It's not a lot of information, but it's perfect. We got a low bubble in this corner of 14 and a half cents and our high bubble in that corner. And she has been growing consistently through here. Everything looks luscious. All of our osculators are doing exactly what we would want them to. And I don't think you're going to get a whole lot more on the five minute chart. It just looks like a closer view of the one hour. It's looking good, folks. She's just waking up. Everything is happening. She's starting to grow. The volume's starting to come in. It is happening slow, but everything is perfect. The revenues are building up. The news is coming in. They've got patents going in. Folks, you need to put INNPF on your watch list and watch for the imminent pop. It is looking prime. Our next top penny stock is also on the middle tier of the OTC. This is G6 Materials, ticker GPHBF. We got a hot chart. It's climbing like a monkey up a burning tree. Now what initially started it was a reverse split, believe it or not. The company announced back in July they were going to do a reverse split of 1 in 10. And it was supposed to happen back in July. Now I don't know what did happen, but it didn't occur until August 3rd. It jumped from about a penny and a half up to about 15 cents, and since then, it has been growing. They just came out with news about some new hot products that they're launching, so it looks like a good time to be considering G6. G6 finished the day at just over 19 cents and just under 29% gains today. They are on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, so we are getting our financials audited. We've got a verified profile. We've got a transfer agent verified. Looking great. Plus, we've got that bonus of being penny stock exempt. So what is G6 all about? Well, they tell us down here that G6 Materials is a high-tech company with expertise in advanced materials that creates value, developing innovative composites for a wide range of industrial uses. Graphene Laboratories is a wholly owned subsidiary of G6, sells a range of graphene based products and other materials including, but not limited to, conductive epoxies, high performance composites, and R&D materials with numerous customers from among the Fortune 500 list of companies as well as NASA and leading universities. Graphene Laboratories has entered the global air filtration market with Breathe Plus, a line of medical grade HEPA air filtration products enhanced with advanced performance graphene material. G6 has identified new graphene based applications to accelerate growth into the future. Accordingly, the company has a valuable IP portfolio currently comprising five granted patents. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh my God, what a drop. Actually, she's getting some aftermarket activity here, I can see, because the last time I looked, we were at 9,000 for our average and 3,000 for today's volume. Now we're at 3,500. Share structure for G6. Well, we've got a semi-low float here. Outstanding share count is only 16.3 million. The insiders own about 2.3 million which would leave us with a float of about 14 million. Not a bad float. Financials for the company. We got nothing to look at over here. Nothing on the annual, nothing on the quarterly. But I did find some information. They tell us here that their revenues at the end of 2022, May is their fiscal year, they did $1.3 million, dropping from the previous year of $1.9 million. Now, they show us down here their quarterlies, but where's May's? I have looked around and I can't find any news presses or any information about May. May is overdue, but I don't see any information about it being late either. For February's quarter, they did $370,000 worth of business. The quarter before, they did $490,000 worth of business. So they did take a drop year over year, quarter over quarter. Jumping on over into those disclosures, we've got no disclosures over here, so let's dive on into that news. Now, I have gone all the way back to the end of last year. This is when they got a trademark for their G6 epoxy. Then in December, the company entered into a strategic partnership agreement to collaborate on production with made advanced materials. 
This company is working with graphene. This made advanced company is trying to add fibers to the graphene so they can come up with new types of products. As I said, they had a consolidation they had told us about back in July, but it didn't happen until August 3rd. And then we have news that came out August 9th. They tell us here that the company announces that it has launched a new thermally conductive G6 epoxy product line. The first two products of the new product line are now available for purchase by consumers on the G6 epoxy website. They tell us down here that the epoxy resins play a vital role in thermal management due to their exceptional thermal conductivity and insulation properties. These versatile materials efficiently dissipate heat, making them essential in electronic devices, power modules, lithium battery heat management, and LED lighting applications. The company's G6 epoxy resins have a variety of uses that include bonding, sealing, and coating. Particularly, they can be used when soldering is not practical or when soldering requires heating adhesive material. G6 epoxy resins have the following unique properties, and then they tell us all the good stuff about it. So this is an alternative to soldering. There's a lot of electronic pieces out there that don't manage well with heat, and soldering irons get pretty hot. So now you'll be able to use an epoxy, which isn't hot at all and is working. I think it's a hot product, if you'll excuse the pun, and we need to see where it's going to go. But the charts are showing there's a lot of excitement right now. So that's what we're really looking at. We've got catalysts, we've got news, and we've got a hot chart. No doubt where the heat is in this chart. This is G6 Materials, ticker GPHBF. That's a six-month, four-hour view, and most of it is flat, underneath the 200. We had a low bubble in June of a penny and a half. That didn't change anything. She kept going sideways under the 200, actually pulling away from it. And then August 3rd came around, and that's when they did the reverse split, jumping from about a penny and a half up to 15 cents, falling back down, and then climbing. And it has been climbing ever since then, floating on the 9-day SMA, not even thinking about dipping down to the 20. And the first time she got close, what did she do? <laughs> Took off again, jumping from 15 cents up to 23 cents. All the SMAs are in nice position, all smoothly growing. Our oscillators have been falling for the last few days, but right now, as you can see, they are just starting to turn around. Our PPO, our MACD, and our RSI have all changed direction now. Our 20-day, a one-hour view. So you can see she is climbing slowly, floating on her 9-day SMA and bouncing off of that 20 and taking off right now. SMAs are still nice and smooth in the right position. And our oscillators, again, we can see they are just now starting to change direction. This is recovery coming. Five day, five minute. So she's basically going sideways here. She took a dip hitting this low bubble and reacted off of it hard, going from a low to a high bubble and then falling back down, keeping more than 50%. That's nice. All of our SMA still climbing slowly and easily, and all of our osculators are doing the same thing. She is looking good, folks. She doesn't look super hot, but she is growing steady, steady, steady. And now they've got new products that they're coming out with, which could cause a big bang. It isn't going to hurt you to put GPHBF on your watch list. Yet. Last ticker we're taking a look at comes from the major exchange. This is micromobility.com, ticker MCOM. Now, over the last five days, I've been asked to look at this by a few people. So, a couple of days ago, I looked at the charts, and they looked like they had the potential to be setting up an atypical breakout chart. <laughs> I was right. It did. It broke out yesterday and today. It jumped from seven cents through the 200 yesterday, hitting 11 cents today, and now falling back to right where she started, 7 cents. Which is good, actually. Not only is it a buying opportunity, but that was her first break through the 200, coming right back to where she started from. To me, that's a perfect token signal that she wants to climb. 
Now, she's got good news. Lots of things are going on, but we don't have a direct catalyst, except that her financials just came out, which were okay. They were pretty much even keel. They didn't take any losses, make any gains. But what they did do was to drop their expenses, their finances by 21%, which is a big deal. So MCOM finished the day at seven cents, like I said, with about 12.5% loss. She is on the NASDAQ, the major exchange, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. You're also going to be able to trade it pre-market and after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what does micro-mobility do? They work with all kinds of scooters around the world. Micro-mobility is a disruptive leader in the micro-mobility sector. They combine expertise in retail, shared services, and vehicle rentals to revolutionize urban transportation. With operations spanning across the U.S. and Europe, the holding group encompasses shared micromobility solutions through their three divisions, Hellbiz Inc., Vehicle Rentals via Wheel Labs Inc., and they have planned brick-and-mortar stores via their micromobility.com. So those are your three divisions right there. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yay, we got one that went up. And wow, did it go up. That is humongous. She was getting 20 million shares a day, which is not under the radar. Today she did, oh my God, 1,100% more. She jumped up to 223 million shares today. Now, she was climbing early and then she did a lot of falling. So that's probably split volume there. Looking at the share structure for MCOM, I don't know what the float is, but I bet you it's a legitimate low float. Outstanding share count is at 10.8 million. A legitimate low float is 10 million or less. I'll bet you this is a legitimate low float. Financials for MCOM. At the end of 2022, they had $15.5 million, but it looks like they are taking some serious losses, a loss of $26 million. Looking at her quarterlies, all right, she did $3.9 million the first quarter of 2023, dropping from $4.1 million the last quarter of 2022, and they are still taking losses. Now, as I said, I looked at their financials, and really, there's only two things you really need to be aware of. One, their revenues were $3.5 million, and they slashed their financial liabilities by 21%, which is the only catalyst I can really see here. Taking a look at those disclosures, we do have a few recent ones here. We've got our 10Q, the most recent financial we were just talking about. Then this filing here, not good news, 424B2. They're telling us they are putting 11 million more shares on the market. And then we've got an 8K on the 25th. This is the company entering into a promissory note, a convertible note. It's going to give them $1.2 million to work with. Taking a look at the news. Now, the first thing I notice here is that they've got two deals sitting on the table. They entered into a letter of intent to merge with Evmo Inc., this is going to help them expand their business away from just consumers to business to business as well. They haven't closed that deal yet. Still working on it. Then they had another deal they entered into up here to acquire Van Moof. This is also a scooter company. I believe it is in Europe. They were doing well, but not well enough. They went into bankruptcy. So this company put in a bid to buy them. Well, they got turned down. The problem is... Van Moof has no other bids, and it looked like a fair bid, so the company's a little upset about it. So they've got two deals they're working on. One has fallen through. I don't know if there's any hope there, and the other one, Evmo, is still sitting on the table. Looking at the other pieces of news here, June 8th, the company's permit is extended for the city of Austin. On June 13th, the company exits unprofitable U.S. and European markets to refocus on financial self-sustainability. It just makes sense. There's lots of areas out there. If you've got an area that's not producing, move to another one. And on that news, they tell us here that the stock jumped nicely. On uh, June 20th, they launched operations in Malta, backed by a local partner. On the 21st of June, they launched their Wheels app. 
So now you can find your scooters anywhere you want. And they do these on a subscription. You pay for 30 days so you can use them anytime you want from anywhere you want. It's not renting one scooter. It's renting the scooter closest to you. How convenient is that? Then on uh, July 1st, their permit was renewed for Palermo, Sicily. And that is basically the end of the news. Except for this piece up here. This is basically the CEO talking to us about what's going on. And I did read it. It's generally nice, but there's not any real specifics that we need to look into unless I miss something. Now, what we do need to look into is that chart. Let's go see. What a wild chart. This is ticker MCOM, Micro Mobility. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Our high bubble was $7.80 six months ago. Then we got a deep, hard fall and a long, exaggerated fall. Hitting a low here of 5.7 cents on August 23rd. Now, I know right now she looks like she is completely flat. But believe me, there is some life in there. Let me do that again. There we go. As you can see, she's been underneath the 50-day SMA, banging her head up against it, falling down to our 200 haul, which I told you a lot of penny stocks are paying attention to. Came back through that 50 only to pass through it because she was pushing towards that 200. Came back down to the 200 haul, hitting that low bubble and bounced off of it, put herself firmly up on the 50 for a couple days, and then streamlined to the 200 going right through it. Now, this is the whole cycle here. She started right here at just under seven cents. Went through the 200, hitting 11, and came back, and she hit just seven cents, sitting on top of the 50 day SMA. That's perfect. This is the first time she has actually gotten through the 200 with a big wick. To me, that is a token sign, a directional, intentional spike. She pushed herself up here, got a long wick, and then waved a little flag up there saying, this is where I'm going. I am heading up. And then she comes back down no lower than where she started from. That's the key. You can't come down any lower. And now she's sitting on top of the 50, just a smidge higher than where she started. I think it is a perfect launch pad. You can see all the volume has been growing and got very strong today. Oscillators are cooling off. We had a nice run here, but that was a big fall at the back part of the day, so everything is looking cool. Coming down to that 20-day, one-hour view, well, you can see a lot of desire here. She is breaking through the 200 over and over again. This was a nice pop right there, coming down to our low bubble, taking off, hitting our high, and coming back down. And right now, she started on the 200. She landed on the 200. You can't ask for better placement than that. Now, our oscillators, we would like to see something better, but come on. Look at all that drop at the back half of the day. You got to expect that the oscillators are going to look like they've been plummeting. Our five-day, five-minute view. So she was drooping down here, hit that low bubble. You can see our 200 has had a change. It is now climbing up. We did have a dip right here. She has come all the way down from 11 cents back down to 7 cents, right? She is right there at that support. Now she, in my opinion, she is going to start to climb, folks. She got a lot of attention here. We got a support right in this area of 7.8. We got another one right in this area of 8.8. And then we've got one up in this area, somewhere about there of 9.9. Nine. And that, then, of course, on up. So we've got a nice even spread here. And you can see our oscillators, they have all turned around right now. We've got a little bit of green climb right there. You see it. And all of our oscillators are starting to spread and push up. Things are starting to look hopeful. MCOM, it deserves to be on your watch list, folks. She's got a lot of volume right now. You know, every day I bring you hot stocks, and these hot stocks are determined by the charts. I hope you're looking for them. It's not as difficult as you think. Get used to looking for one or two types of setups, like the atypical breakout chart or the bounce off of the 200. Get used to finding those charts and then just going through the filings and the press releases, seeing if you can find some good news, something that's going to give the stock some momentum. Those are hot penny stocks you should be looking at. I like to do this for you, but I know you can do it yourself. <laughs>
Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.